How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Tramel Taylor. Well, my royal family, a few have reported this story about our royal daughter. Her name is Amari, with the A, Allen. I um, want to make sure I do not butcher up her name. I, I think I'm correct. I think I am correct. And um, I will have to admit, um, I didn't fully pay attention to this story. Some stories I don't because I know somebody out in the royal family is going to cover it. And when it came to my attention today, some things are swirling around in me that um, I'm going to share. Um, Y'all may disagree with me, uh, but I'll say that for the very last. And um, I'll, I will speak about what's obvious first, but f before we get there, um, let's get into this. So, sixth grader said she lied about boys cutting her dreadlocks. The girl maintained she has been the victim of bullying. So, I'm pretty much, I'm not going to read this because what I'm doing is I'm reading um, what's already going to be said. But I will say here that um, she had accused whoever these children were, that um, they cut off her dreadlocks while telling her her hair was nappy and ugly. So let's listen to this first. Allegation that captured nationwide attention. That 12-year-old African-American girl from Virginia said three white classmates at her Springfield school attacked her, cutting off some of her Redlocks. Well, a new troubling turn tonight. The girl now says she made the story up. And our Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey spoke to the family's attorney, who was there when Amari Allen admitted that this attack never happened. Well, Jim and Wendy, Amari Allen's family issuing a wide-ranging apology tonight. First to those three boys she accused, next to Emanuel Christian School there. She's attended since kindergarten, and finally the family apologizing to the entire community for what it calls a betrayal of trust. This is the photo taken last Wednesday evening when police came to take a report from Amari Allen after she told her family that three white boys held her down on the playground slide, covered her mouth, and cut short some of her dreadlocks. Over the next two days, she told her story to both local and national media, generating enormous community sympathy and support. But in a family meeting Sunday, the Allen's attorney confronted Amari with findings of the investigation both he and police had been doing. They'd been speaking with the boys and reviewing school security camera footage. We just started to find little pieces that weren't adding up. Mm -hmm. So as we continued to you know, kind of press through this and we started to look at you know, the tapes, we started to look at the statements, um, and we actually asked Amari about it, she finally just kind of said, yeah, I made that up. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very tough. That's a tough position to be in. Uh, but now what we're looking at is more, okay, well, why did this happen? Amari's family issuing an apology to the boys, the school, and the community, which reads in part, to those young boys and their parents, we sincerely apologize for the pain and anxiety these allegations have caused. To the administrators and families of Emanuel Christian School, we are sorry for the damage this incident has done to trust within the school family and the undue scorn it has brought to the school. Everybody is incredibly sorry that this all went down the way that it did. They're starting to look at a path forward. And like I said, that involves a lot of counseling, therapy, and open discussion. Emmanuel Christian issuing a statement of its own, the head of school saying that a long season of healing is now ahead. He writes, this ordeal has revealed that we as a school family are not immune from the effects of deep racial wounds in our society. We view this incident as an opportunity to be part of a learning and healing process and will continue to support the students and families involved. 
Now, the Allen's attorney tells me, and speaking, the Allen's attorney tells me, and speaking to Amari yesterday, she still maintains that she was bullied some at the school, mostly subjected to some mean words. So he's going to still try to get to the bottom of that. It is unknown tonight whether Amari will ever return to the school, and if she does, whether or not she'd face disciplinary action there. Back to you now. But, and what about disciplinary action uh, on a larger scale in, in that uh, she filed a false police report? And is it possible that her family is ex will be uh, facing exposure for any lawsuits or from, from the three boys that she no. accused? You know, the family did say in their statement today that they're prepared to take full responsibility for whatever comes their way. And, yeah, of course, filing a false police report can be a crime, but we're talking about a 12-year-old. We're talking about juveniles. Uh, and I'm told by sources close to this case, there will not be any charges, criminal charges in this case, uh, in juvenile court. But, yeah, you raised the question of civil litigation. Don't know tonight whether any of that is going to be coming their way. Just a sad story and situation all the way around. Mm -hmm. Julie Carey, Julie, thank you. Isn't that classic, my royal family? You see how these Beckys get down? Want to charge the child. Now, if that would have been a white girl, what would have, um, you think she would have said that? No. The first thing she would have been hollering is that she needs some counseling and she pop possibly got some mental health issues. No, as we continue on, we want to listen to, I want y'all to listen to our royal daughter close. I want you to pay attention to body language, and then I'm going to tell y'all candidly and courtly what I feel and what I think, and I could be totally wrong, but I always keep it core. So, let's listen to our royal daughter. Minister, where were anybody to protect her from this heinous, heinous crime? You guys have, she, I mean, sometimes I think that I, like, I don't deserve to, uh, like, be there at a Christian school and everything, and that I'm ugly. Like all three were around me, and then one of them just put it behind my back. One of them covered my mouth. Like took like big chunks of my hair and just cut. Ugly. Um, I shouldn't have been born. All right. It's time for something to be done. Oh, the footage is I bad. Kind of like huh. Pull some of them out, and I saw where they just chopped them up and everything. I I, I want to see them um, um, dismissed from the school. I want to see something done. I want to see whatever the policies are for bullying. I want to see them implemented because apparently they're not being implemented. Okay, I'm gonna play that back because some a little bit of it back. Um, and I'm going to point out some things. Where were, Minister, where were anybody to protect her from this heinous crime? You guys have, she, I mean... Sometimes I think that, I, like, I don't deserve to, uh, like, be there at a Christian school and everything, and that... Okay, the first thing our royal daughter said, that she don't think she deserves to be at a Christian school. And we know what, what Christianity has done in the African-American community. Second, she doesn't sound like her natural self when she talks because she's been going to that school since day one. And 
um, I truly think that she does not like her appearance. And let me show y'all something here. So I was doing some browsing and thinking and um, this is the same child. This is a pretty child. And I'm not saying the other one is not a pretty child, but this is a pretty child. And something happened along the way. Now, look at her demeanor. Let me see if I can stop that. Let me go back over here. I didn't intend to hit that. So, we look at our royal daughter and the first thing that I'm gonna be earnest with y'all that came out to me that she's a tomboy and maybe she don't feel comfortable maybe there is some issues swirling around within her psyche about her sexuality and she don't feel feminine all right we're hitting that pre-teen age we're gonna keep it core my royal family and it is literally night and day damn it that would happen again this is her a few days after the interview and now you see her true nature and i do believe that she was bullied at the school but i do believe that our royal daughter is in a state of confusion something is going on and it could be multiple things she's questioning things in her psyche it's very very deep and like i said that was the last part i wanted to bring up was about you can get around the enemy i don't care if it's a christian school or not and you get confused about, well, who am I or what do I represent here? Damn it. Um, and this is drastic to me to see this or that. Now, me personally, because you know I don't really talk about hair. Um, I don't give a damn what anybody in the royal family do to their hair. It doesn't mean that if they flaxinate the hell out of their hair, they are not down for the royal family. Or you can have people go totally natural and red drops would, dreadlocks would be one of many. That That's not about your downness. I just feel like that's your personal choice. And to see her eyes in this light, she felt good. She felt good about that. It's obvious that her mother has her hair in dreadlocks. I like dreadlocks, as long as you take care of them. But maybe she didn't, maybe she um, didn't want to confront her mother about, well, I don't want to wear these dreadlocks. I have daughters, and I've had my daughters come to me and say, Mommy, I would choose to wear my hair a different way. And I would say, no problem. They have gotten at that age that they have to make their choice. And it could be that moms did not want to deal with the hair or the expense of the hair or whatever it may be related to the hair. But you cannot tell me our royal daughter, damn you, today, have this look. Um, and if you look at this picture here, you could mistake her for a boy and she don't feel good about herself. And I'll show another picture. You can literally feel her energy through um, this, these pictures. Now, as far as doing the profusely thanking, um, 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 forgiving and stuff, you know, you say it once and then you leave it alone and deal with your child's immediate situation something is going on and i feel like it is dual so i'm not gonna sit up here and be angry unquote embarrassed
because one of our royal daughters lied on three little snot-nosed ass white boys um them same ones could have possibly been bullying her and usually the school knows about the bully and they will turn a blind eye so that also leads me to believe she didn't feel like there was anyone that she could trust that she could trust that would um, um, protect her because most of those schools are staff with the enemy but our royal daughter is questioning things and like I said I feel like it's multiple multiple so I'm going to leave it right there my royal family I want to know what y'all think I really really do and if y'all totally disagree with me y'all know that don't bother me we family you know point me in another direction I might be seeing something totally different so my royal family render your voice with your beautiful divine words and as always my royal family I thank you for your love I thank you for your support and with that said I shake.